Hello guys, Sally M here and we are back with another Halo Wars 2 build order video for beginners. Today we're going to be covering Voridus. That's probably a build that you haven't seen with Voridus before. It is uh, based on aggression and trying to snowball that early lead. Uh, obviously taking combat spoils early on is key to any Voridus player trying to get ahead because he is a mid-tier leader so you need that early lead to snowball the game and try and win. So we're going to be opening with Generator first, uh, double grunts straight off the bat and with these grunts we're going to be collecting as many resources as possible as we do in all the other build order videos. Just making sure we've got that income coming in so none of our paths are delayed. So essentially within this build what we're going to be doing is massing as many grunts as possible early on and going for an early probably around a two minute mark push to the opponent's base and with grunt mines as well so it's going to be an early grunt mines and we're going to focus down their generator we're going to get all that energy back pretty quickly because of combat spoils so it's worth it in this scenario and Vardis is one of the greatest probably rush leaders in the game because everything he throws at his opponent and attacks he gets back in economy so you're never really behind where if you're rushing with other leaders if you lose those units you're losing your economy you're losing the units you're not really regaining that back and it can put you really far behind so in this build picking up the resources open generator first then upgrade your second harvester and then we're going to be going for supply pads on the main base and that's all we need for now because we don't want to delay these grunts coming out we're not going to pick up any early mini bases like we do with other leaders and the reason for this is because essentially if your opponent's stupid enough you want them to take the mini bases because you get econ uh, eco economy off them as well um, as attacking pads so we're just going to take one mini base in this case and that mini base is going to have a raid camp on it just to build some jump pack brutes to support our units. So here you'll see we're building a lot of grunts now. It's too many mark. We're trying to gather all of our grunts together in one place. We don't want to send them in one at a time to get picked off. We're going to send them all in at once. The enemy's already taken a power node, so we're just going to steal that as well. And surprisingly when we get here, they've already got barracks up and flamers are already coming out. So the flamers are going to count on our grunt slightly. So we have to think about the next step in this game and react to what they're doing. So our raid camp's coming up now. Uh, swap into a second generator because we've got a lot of blue. we got 26 population and we're just going to use all of our mines on this generator. And look at our power income. We're almost 800 power. We can almost go tech 2. So nice grenadier drop on... The second point is going to help us deal with a lot of these flamers. And we're just going to keep focusing down that gem. And we're keeping our opponent busy while we're building up in the background. So we're going to upgrade our second gem, help our economy more, and we're going to start building a few grenadiers to help deal with these flamers. Because there is a lot of flamers coming out now. The opponent is building them up a lot. So we have to start thinking about if we lose this push, we don't get this gem. We have to start thinking about defense. It doesn't really matter what we're doing, throwing away units here, as long as we get the gen. We're getting a lot of money off it, as you can see in the bottom right. Uh, the Grenadier is still there. We're going to suck up the goo there, give him a bit of extra damage boost to try and kill that gen. And we're already upgraded to Tech 2, so by the time the counter rush comes, we'll have Rangers on their way out to deal with these Flamers. Couple of grenadiers now to support us. We're running low on blue and we got a lot of power because we were focusing the generator. So we're going to upgrade a second supply pad to help us in tech two with that economy. Now in tech two, we know the opponent has a lot of flame, and so to counter that, we're going to have to start building rangers straight away. So we're going to go double raid camp and start building rangers. And on tech two with Vardis, you always want to get your leader out as well. Um, now the reason you want to do that is because his Y ability is very good at spreading goo. And on third point, we're going to be going Invigorating Frenzy. And basically, with every engagement we take, we want to use the Leader Y ability and make use of Invigorating Frenzy. So we're aware that generator is weak. We're just going to send one jump pack brute round the back. Hopefully, the opponent has pushed his army away so we can pick that off with just the one brute. 
There you go. It's two bars of red health. The opponent has moved out. Normally, the if he was against a non-AI opponent, they would have pushed out as well, and they'd be straight to your main base right now. They know they just killed your army. They'll want to do as much damage as you did to them. Um, so they'll be going straight to your main base, which is why we built that turret, and we've got rangers coming out. So essentially, just to deal with this army that the opponent has out, we're going to be building double rangers along with our leader. And now we're going to start building that tech 2 army and start harassing the map. Taking some power nerds, taking more minis and starting to think about our expo as well. So the opponent hasn't sent anything on defense. So we are going to use our grenadier drop uh, to harass this even more here. Pick up the goo again. We don't really need the goo on the ground if there's no enemies there. Uh, there's just no point in it. It's not going to do any damage because there's no enemies there. So we're going to use that extra damage to kill the pads faster. So we just took a heavy pad. We're about to take the generator again. So they're in a really, really tough spot right now. And we decided if they don't want to come defend, we'll just push up to the main base. And we realize they're actually getting aggressive here. So we have our leader and that is a lot of flamers. So I immediately swap to upgrading to an anti infantry turret. The reason I do that is because this is if this opponent decides to push, he will do a lot of damage. Because my army's on offense. If he's not going to come back and defend, then I've got nothing to defend back at home. So I have to make precautions. Uh, luckily in this case, he didn't fully commit with this army. Obviously being the AI. And since they just stood there around getting hit by my turrets, my leader and a couple of rangers are going to be picking them off. And we do manage to push them off while having a good offense as well. We, we end up taking down this generator again. And the opponents took, stuck on tech one for a, a long time. We killed two gens. They've got a lot of flamers. And this game, if you didn't realize it already, it, it's, it's over. But it's going to take a good five minutes to actually physically end this game. Uh, because of how good defenses are in the game. So we're just going to be patient here. So what most players do when they're in this situation, they'll keep running their army at the enemy base into turrets and losing them and losing them. And they'll, then they'll wonder at the end of the game, how did I lose? I was so far ahead. And that's because you don't play patiently. You just throw units into turrets and lose them and think your economy can keep up with it. No, at the moment, we don't have a second base yet. So we're still working on five or six pads here. So during this phase of the game, when you're patiently waiting to end it like this, you know you've won, but you just got to seal it out. You can't afford any mistakes, so you play it safely. You check your opponent's expos, make sure they can't expo and get themselves back into the game. You pick up the mini bases, you pick up the power nodes, and you start getting your upgrades and your full max pop uh, on your army. So the best thing for Voridus to do in this situation, because he's so far ahead, is always go for a Scarab. Your economy is really good. With Voridus during the mid game, you still want to continuously harass your opponents. Now, you won't see that in this game too much. It's pretty hard to harass the AI when they're sat on the main base with three anti infantry turrets and they didn't pick up any minutes. So, it's a bit hard to demonstrate that harass style. But rather than just sitting here, always be doing something. So, if your opponent has mini bases, split off your units to attack those mini bases. Always be on offense with Voridus. Uh, so you can build that economy, the army, and the scarab in the background. If you're on defense as far as it is, you're going to have uh, quite a tough time trying to deal with some of the leaders out there. But if you can snowball early on like we did in this game, then you're going to have a real chance at winning against almost any leader. I mean, if you kill two upgraded generators uh, and an upgraded pad early on like that against any leader, you should have a gigantic lead. So in this situation, it's just map awareness. Uh, we were going to go check that mini on the right side, uh, essentially, to kill it with our whole army. Uh, but then we realized the enemy is in the middle of the map, potentially could push our expo and kill it. So we're just going to all units back here. I'm going to go tech free in a second. Stronghold upgrade complete. 
Honestly, the AI is just so bad. So we do, we're just running around, gunning down the enemy, killing more of the units, putting them even further behind, uh, just until we can seal out this game. And as you saw earlier, the game was over at six minutes. We're now on the ten minute mark, and we still haven't ended it. And this is just how Halo Wars games go. You have to be patient because if you're not patient, you potentially can lose still. So guys, I guess this downtime is a chance to talk about the new Halo Wars 2 multiplayer guard that I'm writing at the moment. It is so close to being done. We're just finishing these last build order videos for the Banished. The beginner ones, obviously a lot of you have said you want the advanced ones coming out. You want us to start, me to start playing proper people on ladder to, to even further demonstrate. Now, because of the ladder games, they can change so dramatically. It's hard to show a certain build or certain playstyle with a leader when you're always adapting and changing, which is why I first created the beginner's build order guides. It shows one build, one strategy, and shows you how to complete it from start to finish. Um, so you can practice that, get your eco in check, get your army composition in check, and then we move up to the advanced guards where you're thinking on your feet, grabbing stuff at certain times, and how to best describe how you do that and put that into the gameplay. So as soon as these videos are done, we will be going on to those advanced guys. Do not worry. Do hold on. Uh, Christmas is around the corner, so hopefully trying to get that multiplayer guard out before Christmas as a nice little Christmas present to you guys. Uh, now, the new guide, it has a lot more information in than the old guide. It's in a, a lot better structured format. We've got a 1v1 tier list as we did before. We've also got a teams tier list, so the top leaders that work best in teams. Uh, we've got unit stats on there. We have all of the leader power stats for every leader broken down. So that's almost completed as well, not quite yet, but every leader power stat, such as what they do, um, what percentage bonus they give, the heal tick rates, the cooldown rates, how much they cost, everything is gonna be within this guide for every leader. Uh, we're working on the veteranacy uh, bonuses for each unit as well. Uh, we just need a bit more extra data for that to put in there. And of course, we're expanding the build orders. So in the first guide, we had one build order per leader, just to start with, because it was a lot of work to do at first. I think it took me the best part of two months to actually write the first guide. Uh, this one's taking a lot longer. Uh, but we're going to have roughly about three different build orders per leader and we're going to try and break down which build order you would use on certain maps against certain leaders because you do change your strategy um, against different leaders. And obviously your opponent comes into it as well. Um, I mean, I play a lot of champion players because there's not many of us left at the moment. You you get used to their play style and how they play, so you know how to better counter that. And I came across this one guy on ladder, and I actually lost the game because he was playing cutter, and on tech one, which is unexpected, he went he went hero, he went snipers, he went grenade marines, he went upgraded jackrabbits. And I just wasn't prepared for that amount of aggression. He upgraded everything on Tech 1. Obviously, he was on Tech 1 for a long time. But even my Tech 2 advantage couldn't pull me back into the game because the amount of units that he had. But that was one win. Every time I've played him since, he hasn't beat me because I know what he does. So it's learning your opponents, learning the maps, learning the leaders, um, and all things like that. And this is what the guard's going to go more in depth into. And obviously, hopefully, the advanced guards after this as well. So this game's kind of just closing out now. We're waiting for that Scarab. Uh, we're preparing. So we're starting to build engineers to support the Scarab. We did throw away a couple of units there to get some extra population because we are max pop now. Scarab's on his way. Game's about to be over. So we'll just patiently wait this out. Quick check there, didn't realise we're playing Isabel. So when you're going in like this, uh, we have Cataclysm, we have Invigorating Frenzy, and what you want to do when you're pushing a base like this, use your leader, drop that Y ability, there we go. Spread as much goo as possible. Drop your Invigorating Frenzy as you're walking in to heal up your units. 
spread as much goo around the base as possible and Cataclysm does damage buildings so we pop Cataclysm off and look how fast this base drops with the Scarab in there as well and look at our economy in the bottom right we are rich rich and that's what Cataclysm can do on a base dead almost instantly and when you're ahead like that that's what you want to do it's all about saving the leader powers for the perfect moments uh, to help you win the game Love how the AI just hangs on here, building a base right in front of this huge army when they have one jackrabbit left. Game finally over. And the map is looking very red. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been the Vorodis build order video. Um, thank you again for watching make sure you hit that subscribe button follow me on twitch to see these builds live in action and how i adapt ask me any questions as well uh, make sure you join the discord that's the best way to get in touch and ask questions so i can help you guys out again thank you for watching peace out